Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Um, today we're going to do something a little bit different. It's not going to be exactly the same as I normally do. Um, but I'm going to make what a lot of people call country suppers. Um, and what it is, is it's just basically a lot like country folk eat. Um, or soul food kind of meal. Um, a lot of us that grew up in the South, especially, not saying it didn't happen elsewhere, but in the, in the South, especially, um, it was really hard and tough making ends meet a lot of times. And so our families would take just what little bit they could scrounge get together to make a meal. And so I try to do it for us at least once a week, sometimes twice a week. Um, that way it's, it's cheaper on my grocery budget. So we just try to find two or three things that are kind of cheap and we throw those together and that we make a meal out of it. So tonight we're going to do some macaroni and tomatoes, some cornbread, a can of Northern beans, and some sliced spam that I'm just going to fry up in the skillet. So I'm just going to take you along and... I may talk during that time or I may not. I'm not sure yet. We'll just see how it goes. But right now, I've got my oven preheated to 425 and I'm going to mix up my cornbread real quick. And then um, after that, I'll start working on all the other pieces to it and it'll be real quick and easy. Um, most of it is it's pretty quick. Um, the salmon's canned, the tomatoes are canned, the beans are canned. So the cornbread is really the only thing that would take a little bit more effort, but even then it wouldn't be that much. So to make my cornbread, I usually take about two cups of cornmeal mix. It's the Martha White White cornmeal mix. I like doing using that. Um, I really don't like the buttermilk one. To me, it the, the denseness of my cornbread, it messes with that. So I tried to do just straight up regular cornmeal, not the butter, buttermilk. So it's usually about two cups of cornmeal, a quarter of a cup of cooking oil. It can be any type. I technically never have used olive oil. So I usually do vegetable or canola. I mean, if you really didn't have anything but olive oil, you could go ahead. I don't think it'd make much of a difference. Add an egg. And then you're just going to add milk until you get the consistency you want. Now, while I'm waiting for my oven to preheat, I have got my pan that I use for my cornbread in there, and I have got a good amount of oil in the bottom. I wouldn't say, let's see, I wouldn't even say it's an eighth of a cup, but I wouldn't say that it's just a tablespoon or two. It's somewhere in the middle. Uh, and the reason why I do that is because I like the edges or the underneath part of my cornbread kind of crunchy. And there's a lot of people that do that. So I still want my cornbread cake, but I don't, I want, I want it to be a little bit crunchy on the bottom. So it basically, as it bakes, fries. And that's what I'm waiting on. And while my oven's preheating, I've got that in there and getting ready as well. Also, I was gonna tell you, I have been known to use water for my cornbread. So if I, you know, ran out of milk or I've even used powdered milk, you know, mix up a little bit of powdered milk, put it in here. So if that week for some reason you ran out of milk or you don't have milk or you still want to cornbread and you have all the other things, then all you have is water, use it. Don't worry about it. It's not going to be as good, but it'll work. All right. So I'll come back in just a few minutes and I'll show you when I add, add this to the pan. And then we'll move on to the next thing. Okay, y'all. So I got my cornbread mixed up. And if you got this grease hot enough, you hear a little bit of a sizzle, sometimes more than that. Um, and I love that sizzle. So, get all this out of here. And this is a great meal for, you know, being on a budget. All right, I'll stick this in the oven. 
can get it done. And I'm already working on my water for my macaroni. So we're gonna do that. And we'll get this little skillet ready. And I'm gonna go ahead and fry up the spam. So I'll be right back when I start that. Let me get this grease hot. Okay, y'all. So I've got some spam sliced up and I'm frying it. We've had to do this a lot when our kids were little, when we were having hard times making ends meet. So we'd have like spam and biscuits, or we would fry spam and have it with our supper instead of meat. It was just cheaper and it would get them fed. Wasn't the best option, I know, but it worked. Didn't do it a lot, but sometimes you just, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. But, um, so I'm getting this, uh, basically dump it out of the can, slice it, cook it, that's it. And you're just kind of getting a little bit posty on each side, that's it. Um, cornbread's coming along good, ain't done yet, and I'm getting my water ready for my macaroni still, it's taking forever. And this is my can of northern beans. You can use any type of bean. I just had a can of this and I was gonna use it. I'm gonna put a little bit of bacon bits in it and that's it. So everybody gets a little bit of something. And it's just a little country supper that I threw together. Not a big deal at all. And I will be back here in a few to show you how to do the macaroni and tomatoes. Okay, y'all. So the macaroni is al dente. And I usually use um, 28 ounce can of tomatoes with juice. And I usually do the whole tomatoes and break them up myself. But I didn't have any of those. All I have was diced. So, this is it. You can always make a little bit more macaroni. You don't have to do just that little bit. But it is so good with a little bit of kosher salt. Just a little bit. We do that to taste. And some pepper. And that's it. It is so good. And that's it. All right, so now for my northern beans, I just add just a little bit of, so per each can, a little bit of bacon bits, so a couple tablespoons. And then I'll stir all that up. And then I'll just heat it up until it's bubbly. And then that's ready to go. And now that I've got everything prepared, my cornbread's out of the oven. Let me show you. Here it is so pretty anyway um i'll come back here and i'll show you everything plated up i'll be right back forgot to tell y'all i forgot all about this heat this up a little bit before you serve it because the tomatoes made it cold and i've already tried it and it ain't salty enough all right y'all i'll see you back here in a minute okay y'all so here's the finished product um just don't forget to after you get these mixed together with the extra ingredient that we add to each. You just warm them up a little bit. Salt and pepper to taste. Normally on the beans, I don't salt them because of the bacon. I just pepper them, but that's it. It's a little country supper and that's enough to fill up my children. So it's, it's really good country supper and I'm gonna give you another example later on uh, in this video of another different type of country supper. You just throw it together. You can call it a low budget meal. You can call it making it to payday, whatever you want to call it, but that's what it is. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I'm gonna take you along as I throw together this next country supper. Um, this one we're gonna do some pork chops. Nothing special. Um, 
I, I'm going to, today, instead of rolling them in flour and frying them, I'm going to put a little bit of this in the pan with it, uh, with the pork chops. Um, you can marinate them and cook them beforehand. That's, you know, totally acceptable. But you can also put a little bit in with your skillet uh, while, while you're cooking it. Also, I'm gonna add just a little bit of water because the marinade gets a little sticky. And so I just add just a teeny bit of water just to kind of make sure everything stays good. Um, if you're new to my channel, I always buy pork loin. I feel like it's the best um, to make pork chops with. I cut these myself. Um, you'll notice that it's got, you know, not a lot of fat, but a little bit of fat on the edge. I leave that there because that's flavor. Um, I get a pork loin. I usually don't even pay attention to how much weight it is. Um, I just pay attention to the price. I usually spend about $10 for a pork loin. Um, you can get anywhere from two to three meals out of that. Some people can actually get four, just depending on how big it is. Um, I can cut thin pork chops, thicker pork chops, um, chunks. We have what we call pork chunks over rice, which is just basically diced up pork um, that we cook up and then we either put some kind of rub on it or some kind of marinade and then we put it over rice. We mix it with vegetables. We've done all kinds of stuff. Um, today we're going to have some purple whole peas and some Brussels sprouts and cornbread. And then I'm just going to take these pork chops. I think I got, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pork chops. Here, I'll show y'all. Out of what was left out of this pork loin, I had already used some of it. I've already used like half. So, and this was about a $10 pork loin. Uh, I don't remember the weight because it's been in the freezer, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my skillet hot, put a little oil in it. I'm going to go ahead and start putting these in here. You may have to do them in batches. I'm not going to add salt because I'm going to uh, use this marinade. This marinade's got quite a bit of sodium in it. Um, so, we're just going to go with it. Let's see, four, five. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, nine. I got nine pork chops out of that. So, take my marinade, and I'm going to put this on low. And we'll pour the marinade over, and I'm not going to go nuts. I'm not going to fill the pan up full. It's just enough to cover these. And believe it or not, it will season them. Now, you can put some onion powder on this or some kind of steak seasoning on it if you wanted to. I know it's pork, but it'll still work. Um, some pepper, you can do that. And then just a touch of water because I want this to slowly simmer and I don't want it to get sticky and gummy because I have a whole nother batch to do and I don't want to do that. All right, so there's that. Now I've already been cooking my peas uh, purple whole peas is what we prefer. They're very similar to black eyed peas. These I grew myself, um, me and my family, and they were frozen and put up in the freezer. So we're gonna make that today. Um, I'm gonna bring you along when I mix up the cornbread. Of course, you've already seen me do that a million times. Um, but that's it. The cornbread, I'm just gonna bake in the oven like always, but you can fry it. And I'll show you all that one day in a video. I think I've already done it once before. But, um, yeah, that's it. Just something real simple. And um, I'll bring you back here in just a few when I start on something else. Let's get these pork chops done. Okay, y'all. So, back over here. I'm going to go ahead and get my cornbread going. You need to preheat your oven to 425. And I usually take my pan, put some oil in the bottom, and set it in there while my oven is preheating so that I can get hot grease that I'm going to pour the batter into. I like a crispy edge or bottom to mine, and that's why I do that. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. So basically, you can do this iron skillet. It doesn't matter. Whichever kind of skillet you want. It's about that much oil. That's quite a bit in the bottom. You can use a little less. It doesn't have to be that much. Um, cornmeal mix is what I use. Not yellow cornmeal, but the white. Um, about two cups worth. You're going to need an egg. You're going to need another cup of oil. I'm sorry, another quarter of a cup of oil. Not a whole cup. That's insane. Okay. And enough milk to make a batter. So I just usually start about about quarter to a half, somewhere around in there. Until I get it the consistency I want. And usually I do not put the egg in in the bottom. The egg was cracked, so I'm gonna go ahead and get it in the bowl. Okay. Put just a touch more milk in there. All right. Okay. So, grab my pan. Pour this in. And usually it sizzles, but I had it sitting out for a minute. But that's okay. It's still going to do what it needs to do. So you'll just spread all this out and bake it. Like I said, that is a little bit too much oil, but it should still work just fine. Uh, I'm going to stick it in the oven. Let it cook. And it'll come out when it's toasty brown. Um, I've got the pork chops finished. They're here. Got them all done. Um, I got my peas done, but I'm going to set them over here and let them simmer some more. And I'm going to go ahead and make some Brussels sprouts. The Brussels sprouts I'm making are just frozen Brussels sprouts. You just cook them according to package directions. Okay, I'll be back when I get the rest of this done. Okay, y'all. So this is the finished product. Here are the peas that we grew in our garden um we freeze those and put them up maybe one day i'll do a video on that uh, really really simple um we like those better than um these are purple holes we like those better than black eyed peas there is a little bit of a difference um and then i just steamed some brussels sprouts we've got our pork chop that had a little bit of marinade cooked with it it was literally less than 10 minutes they were done and my cornbread perfect dinner filling and the best country supper or southern supper or sometimes people even call it soul food okay y'all make sure you like and subscribe i'll see y'all next time